round up the best beef in France. Say hello to the papa of Nouvelle Cuisine. Stroll with royalty in a chateau garden as Pierre soaks up Beaujolais, this time on Pierre Frenet's Cooking in France. Pierre Frenet's Cooking in France is made possible by the Grand Marnier Foundation, proud to support public television, and by Carillon Importers Limited, importing beverages in the spirit of quality. South of Burgundy's treasured vineyards, the countryside levels into lush green pastures, perfect grazing land. The huge muscular cattle bred here produce France's finest beef. This is the French equivalent of the American Midwest. It's known as the Charolais, a sparsely populated place of brooding beauty and clean, fresh air. But it's still Burgundy, southern Burgundy, and nearby, Grapes flourish in vast sun-drenched fields that produce world-famous Beaujolais wine. Beaujolais country comprises the northern part of the Rhone Alps region. It begins just above France's second city, Lyon, along the main route from Paris, stretching from the rugged alpine highlands in the east to the gentle rolling hills nourished by the Saône and Loire rivers. Macon is the largest city, and nearby are the small villages of Charol and Saint Christophe. And it was in Saint Christophe, early in a hard driving rain, that Pierre began his big beef adventure. Saint Christophe is home to one of France's largest and most colorful cattle markets. For the last 500 years, every Thursday morning starting at 5, cattlemen unload their huge animals into holding pens. Every year, more than 100,000 head of cattle pass through this village of 600 inhabitants. As the intermittent bursts of rain overflowed the gutters in the main exhibition hall, Pierre joined local cattleman Philippe Pacot for an inspection. Listening to the din of all those cows mooing and watching the scene, Pierre couldn't help but be overwhelmed by the giant assembly of hoof. The largest beasts, breast drooping with weight, tipped the scales at almost 2,000 pounds. Philippe explained to Pierre how buyers check the quality of the cattle. A knowing probe behind the buttocks is the key test to determine how tender the meat from that animal will be. By the time negotiations wrap up at around nine, the cattlemen have worked up a terrific appetite. In one of the many bistros surrounding the market, locals were already packing away the hearty food and washing it down with generous helpings of red wine. Madame Dumont, the owner and chef for the past 25 years, suggested a couple of traditional specialties. Pierre started with a heaping plate of pot au feu, boiled beef. And then, because he couldn't resist, he had a second main course of tête de veau, veal's head. Although Pierre could have kept on eating this type of food all day, he was expected back at Philippe's farm. There, taking shelter in an abandoned 14th century chateau, Pierre met up with a legend as big as the Charolais themselves, Pierre Troigros. Troigros is one of France's gastronomic giants, and as the two waited for the weather to clear, they caught up on old times. Once the rain lightened, Philippe rounded up his beefy posse of Frenchmen for a tour. Completing the group was old friend Marc Sarrazin, a local boy who emigrated to New York and now supplies beef to the city's finest restaurants. Sarrazin explained that nowadays, Americans lean toward leaner beef. Philippe proudly pointed out that his Charolais are big, lean, athletic cattle with lightly marbled meat and that he breeds them in the most natural way. Do you use uh, artificial insemination for no, your cow? No, on my farm we only use bull on the middle of the cow. So you cow. pull, the bull are busy here? Yes, very busy. Uh, natural natural conditions. How many bulls you got? I have five bulls in my farm. And how many cows? Uh, 70 cows. Well, uh, it's an average uh, farm. You know, no wonder they look happy, your bull. <laughs> <laughs> 
Next, the two Pierres headed to Rouen, an industrial city of 41,000, about an hour west of Lyon. Though it's located on the banks of the Loire River, Rouen is certainly no tourist destination. Instead of medieval monuments or soaring vistas, it's known for producing tires and underwear, and one of France's great restaurants. The most notable statue in town, by the sculptor Armand, celebrates Rouen's main attraction, Restaurant Trois Gros and its legacy of grand dining. Restaurant Trois Gros stands on a busy roundabout right across from the train station, a reminder of its beginnings in the 1950s as a working class family bistro. Since its humble start, the restaurant's decor has gone upscale, though without losing its generous, good-natured atmosphere. In the dining room, Pierre Troigros stands with his tall toque like a king receiving his court. And what a kingdom! His restaurant is one of only 20 in France to win three stars from the gastronomic bible, the Michelin Guide. In the kitchen, the chef showed off some of the new Trois Gros creations. A seafood salad doused with a vichyssoise sauce. A terrine of tête de veau wrapped in a tomato confit. Langoustine crowned with slivers of raw vegetables and a snapper-like fish called rouget, served with marrow and a red wine sauce. But if one recipe sums up the Trois Gros cooking philosophy and its influence on the Nouvelle Cuisine movement, it's a salmon recipe, which Michel, the next generation of Trois Gros chefs, demonstrated to Pierre. Very nice. So, uh, what are you going to do for us here? Uh, I'm going to prepare a very traditional Trois Gros dish, which is the saumon à l'oseille. Oh, the salmon in sorrel sauce. Yes, it's a, you know, it's a dish born in 1960, because my father has too much sorrel in the garden and he doesn't know what to do. And, with it, you know. The staff has uh, omelette with sorrel, have soup with sorrel, so one day you have the idea to make a sauce with sorrel. So they decided to do so. I remember when uh, your uncle, Jean, came to New York, he did that many years ago, and there was a recipe in New York Times, and I'm glad to be here, because I, want, I like that recipe so much that they are, the new American, the young American, they don't know how to do it. Show me how to do it. So, um, so I need a fresh salmon. My yeah. preferred is the, the Scottish. That's boneless and skinless, right? Yeah, Scottish salmon. I I cut escalop, you know, which is a thin slice. Yeah, like this. Oh, that's about. Uh, so you have two almost beautiful half an inch thick. escalop. And you pound a little bit. Voilà. Very little. Tu peux taper comme ça. Yeah. Pour les, pour bien les égaliser. Yeah, it's got to be cuisson. nice and flat. Yes. Okay, voilà. compris. Okay. J'assaisonne le sel et le poivre. On one side only. Freshly grated white pepper. Give bit of salt. Voilà. Je vais faire, got to prepare my sauce. So for the sauce, mushroom, champignon de Paris. So mm -hmm. it's one cup. Slice, very thin. Shallots. Shallots, about a quarter cup. Slice voilà. very thin again. Alors là, du, du, du sauvignon. Dry, dry white wine. Dry white wine, uh, sauvignon, là, very dry. Alors là, c'est carrément la demi-cup. Hein. La demi-cup, voilà. Et un dry white vermouth. Yes. D'accord. La, la moitié, so, alors c'est quarter. Hein. It's a quarter cup, yeah, that's right. Voilà. Et euh, ceci est le fish stock. Yes. Alors là, c'est... C'est so about three quarter cup of fish broth. Voilà. Donc maintenant, nous allons procéder à la cuisson. Now you're going to Je cook me... it, put it on top of the stove. Michel, the sauce is almost reduced, right? Uh, it's ready. It's ready, good. We're ready to, uh, to put the cream inside. So you got uh, three quarter of a cup of heavy cream here. Voilà. So just boiling. You bring that to a bowl. Yeah. The cream in France got body to it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, when it's boiling, we pass it through Chinois. You pass it through a Chinese cap. Chinese, huh? You bring it to a bowl, gold, uh, voilà. you bring that to a gold uh, rolling bowl. Voilà, okay. Push it through a sieve, uh -huh. eh? just to take all the cream out. Okay? Yeah. All the, I mean, all the taste is in the shallots and the, so and the mushroom here. So, 
it's good to push it to have the push taste. Push it through, yeah. yeah. Put pressure on it. When all the, all like the goodies, yeah. the shallots, cut through. On remet ça sur le feu. So you bring that back to a boil. Ce que tu fais, tu vas poivrer pendant que je sale, moi. Uh, you stop me, okay? Enough. Ah oh, oui, voilà, c'est bien. Et maintenant, on va, on va jeter l'oseille comme ça dedans, juste la casser comme ça, just like this inside. Right. And don't use any more the whisk just now with the spoon. Like this, you don't break the leaves. Yeah, right. Okay. Stir it to the spoon. You don't want to break the leaves. I understand. And can you see that uh, the sour? Yeah. It. yeah. Just the contact of the hot yeah. sauce make cook it. You barely cook it. Voilà. Et l'oseille, tu vois, simplement au contact de la chaleur, it commence déjà à tomber. À tomber, it gets wetted. You don't want to overcook it. You test it. Et voilà, la sauce est prête. That's done. The voilà. sauce is done. So now you have to cook the, the fish. Yeah, we're going to cook, start the cuisson of the fish in a hot pan like this. And uh, where is the butter? Oh, we don't put butter because ah. uh, the salmon is fat. We got a good pan It's, here. No yeah. stick to kill it. But hot, you It's know. It's very hot. Okay. okay. So start. Very... Can you hear the, the cuisson already? Yeah, absolutely. And the cuisson of the salmon is very short because we we better cook it cook it uh, rare, you know. Yeah, you want it rare in the salmon. Yeah. So warm and uh, red. So about uh, 20 seconds on each side. On each we side. We really have to have the right cuisson. Very good. You don't want it overcooked. When was this uh, recipe started? Uh, my father and my uncle started in uh, around 1960. Uh, because they have too much sorrel in the garden. Huh. And because the salmon, I mean, the, the, the idea of that dish is to cut the salmon in scallops and yeah. leave it rare. You know, because the salmon, when it's rare, I think the taste is, uh, is uh, very nice and it's not dry. Uh, if I remember correctly, your, your father and your uncle, they were the first one to cook salmon that way. Yeah, well, yeah, they were the first one. Yeah. It's why you're so simply dish make a uh, revolution. Uh, absolutely, but it's, this is very simple, but it's great because uh, I remember many years ago I tested it, but I, I want to test your recipe, your style, the same style, I know. You know that this recipe doesn't change since 30 years now, and I think it's like you, it doesn't take one uh, holder, it doesn't become holder. No, <laughs> the technique is good, the technique so now, is very important. Yeah, it's ready, Just ready? the hot sauce on the plate. And the scallops were right in the middle. Very good, it's beautiful. Very so nice. maybe, yeah, we're gonna taste it now. All right, very nice. Uh, hola, look. Ah, the look cuisson is formidable. Right. The cooking is very nice, you see. It's not overcooked, not dry. Mm. The flavor of the sour. Yeah. And everything bind it together with the cream, of course you have a good product here. The sorrel is uh, very important. You know, believe me, it's great. And it's easy to do. And you, you could do it at home. Very easily. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pierre. I really enjoy it. Bon appétit. <laughs> Thank you very much. Pierre donned a sports coat and made his way to the elegant dining room where dessert was being served. The two Pierres fondly recalled Jean Troigroux the brother and co-chef who had been so instrumental in forging the Trois Gros reputation before his death in 1983. Yeah, the, uh, I know Jean, his brother, unfortunately, he, he passed away yeah, quelques années, a few years ago, and he was a great chef too. You know, this family, it's amazing. It goes in generation. The father had a restaurant right here near the railroad station, you know, and his son, they continued the tradition. La know. famille, la famille. The family. This is a really uh, même, family. Même les gendres uh, et les beaux-fils doivent être cuisinés. So the son and no, uh, what about the grand, tes, tes petits-enfants? Ah, ben bah, j'espère, ils sont souvent dans la cuisine, ils tournent. Uh, uh, I'm asking about his, uh, uh, he's got grandchildren too. On les mûrit, là. He said they're running around in the kitchen and uh, they have a feel of the food, you know. Mm. C'est très important de... Ah oui, donner le feu sacré. Hein. Oui, le feu sacré. Nous sommes des enfants de la balle, comme ils disent. Oh, very ça. good. So, uh, now we're going to have... Uh, Some dessert. And what a choice of desserts. There was a country cherry tart, a chocolate mocha tort, and much, much more. Pierre opted for a variety of fresh and lightly poached fruit and berries, 
served with a raspberry coulis and a generous spoonful of thick, heavy cream. It's not uh, very special. I think he's doing a, some kind of butterfly. He's doing a, a butterfly. Ah, voilà. Oh, beautiful, look at that. Everybody has a different design and different touch. Beautiful, look at that. Oh, yeah. You do that, uh, you like Picasso, huh? Oui, 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 non, Miro. Miro, oh, Miro, okay, all right. Inspired by the Trois Gros artistry, Pierre returned to the spectacular kitchen overlooking the garden for a recipe of his own. I'm going to do a roast filet of beef with pepper, and it's going to be marinated with wine and herbs. Then I'm going to do it right now. The first thing you do, you put a little bit of salt on each side. This beef is from a Charolais beef. It weighs about a uh, filet of beef. It weighs about a pound and a quarter. I'm adding some cracked paper on both sides, which you crush it. You could buy it already made, you know, I saw that done. I'm going to put that all around like this, and I'm going to put it over, and I'm going to press it around it. I want the crushed paper to adhere to the meat, OK? To this, I'm going to add two clover garlic, a a sprig of fresh rosemary, two bay leaves, a little bit of olive oil, about a tablespoon of olive oil. And I'm going to roll this together like this, press it. And uh, to this, I'm going to add one cup of wine, Pinot Noir wine, which came right here from the vineyard of Monsieur Troigros. And one tablespoon of vinegar, red wine vinegar. And I'm going to add, to give a special flavor, some vodka, which are very hot, pepper vodka. It's kind of spicy, but it's going to give a very nice touch to the dish marinade, two tablespoons. We mix it well. We're going to cover that for, with plastic. And then you marinate it for about 30 minutes. I'm going to cook the meat. I have this grill, so the crazy grill. And you put that right in here on top of it. And this piece of filet, you got to leave it there for a while, but you have to turn it around, you, you know, to, to cook it. It's going to take about maybe 10 minutes to cook. And meanwhile, I got the marinade here. I got a little saucepan. And I'm going to make this marinade as to go back. I'm going to put that in the saucepan here with all the goodies here. And I'm going to reduce it more than half. Now the meat, I'm going to roll it. See, you turn it like this. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes. It depends on the thickness of the filet. It's a very good filet of beef. It's on Charolais. This one is very thick. So it may take a little longer. It depends. So this, <coughs> I have to reduce by more than half. This stove is very, very good. I wish I had a store like this at home, believe me. It's a beautiful kitchen, garden here, young chef cooking, smiling. Meanwhile, this is reducing. It's reduced the point I wanted. I'm going to add about a third of a cup of chicken broth. I'm going to bind this. I'm going to add, when it's reduced like this, about one teaspoon of tomato paste. That's all. Now, I want to wash my meat. All right, we turn it. And this, if a little too hot, you could move it around because this is cast iron. And the cast iron re retain the heat and uh, just move it around. Now, you see, this side is bigger here than here. This is, you feel like going to step around. So, you got, a, you got more heat here, it's going to require more cooking on that side than uh, on this side here. All right. I want to bind, make sure that the paste is blended well. See, I got everything in here. I got the thyme, the bay leaf, the garlic. 
uh, it's reducing, but the tomato paste does, and uh, the chicken broth gives flavor to it, and the tomato paste gives a little body to it. Okay, my meat is ready, now I'm gonna serve it. But what is very important, what you have to do, you have, see this is very rare here, right now, you have to let that meat rest in a warm place for about 15 minutes. During that quarter hour, Pierre recruited an experienced set of hands to do the carving. Thanks to the hands-on approach, Trois Gros remains at the forefront of French cooking. The two Pierres, with some 100 years of experience between them, arrange the filet, mashed potatoes with carrots and chives in a fanciful fashion, as if they were still eager young apprentices. Of all France's celebrated three-star chefs, Pierre particularly admires Trois Gros, who has never forgotten that his place remains above all in the kitchen. Good steak demands good wine. Appropriately, not too far from restaurant Trois Gros is Beaujolais country. Beaujolais was once considered an ordinary table wine, but in recent years, its reputation has grown, and today, it is judged as one of France's most enjoyable fruity wines. Unlike Grand Cru, harvested by hand, here the process is often mechanical. Productivity counts, and costs must be held down to keep the wine affordable. But some Beaujolais has an aristocratic touch. Pierre visited Brouilly, where his old friend, the Marquise Roussy de Salle, resides. Her chateau is a big house to handle all by herself, and she was thrilled to have Pierre stop by. My dear Pierre, welcome here in the Chateau de la Chaise. As you know, you're in the area of Beaujolais, and this is on the Cru de Brouilly. I'm very happy to be here because the Beaujolais the Chateau Chateau La Chaise is the greatest Beaujolais. Well, as you know, it's this, this estate is the biggest because we have 97 hectares only in one lot, and uh, you don't see many estates of this size. Let's talk about La Chaise. Why? This has been built by the brother of Father La Chaise, the confessor of Louis XIV. Then after that, it stays always in the same family because uh, uh, Mademoiselle de La Chaise married a Montague and through that it went to my grandmother and I inherited from this estate. So let's say that this estate has always remained in the same family and the chateau hasn't changed and the furniture, so you can still find it uh, as it was in the old days. That's beautiful. Uh... What about this beautiful garden? You know, it looks so gorgeous. Well, those gardens around here have been drawn uh, by the famous Mr. Lenaud, the gardener of Versailles, you know, who draw all the gardens. And uh, it's uh, what you call a jardin à la française. So uh, we have to, we managed to replant all those flowers that you can see here. There was nothing when I arrived about 20 years ago. The problem is that we, the soil is difficult for flowers, so we have to be very careful about what sort of plants we're putting. This is mostly clay here. Yeah. Yes, the soil is in clay, and it's a very poor soil, and this is very important. This is why we're making such a wine, and this is a soil that suits very well our cépage, which is gamay. Gamay. Yes, and this is very important for the quality of our wine uh, of Brouille. Proud though she is of her formal gardens, the Marquise is even prouder of her equally manicured vineyards. Beaujolais, you know, it's a huge area. It belongs to the south of Burgundy. And in, in there you have different crues. You have the Beaujolais, the Beaujolais village, and you have 10 crues, which are the top of this area. Col and Grand Cru. Col Grand Cru, absolutely. And among all of them, this is Bouilly, where you are. So what's special in this area is there's the whole this whole area is planted only with gamay. Only gamay, huh? Unique, absolutely. The unique plant is gamay. And here in this Cru du Beaujolais, what is special is the way these pieces have been clipped. So what's special is, as you can see there, it's the way it's been clipped in February, which is called in French la taille en gobelet. And then after that, you can see here that it's all tied up. The fact that it's tied up like this, keeps the grapes, it provides them from the hail and of the they sun. They protect it. Yes, they protect it and, uh, from the hail and to when, when, the, the, when the sun is too strong. 
And by the way, it's clipped up. The top is clipped up after because uh, we, what we want is to keep all the strength for the, for the leaves and for the grapes. That's very important for the quality. Yes, like a shade over yeah. the, the grapes. And and the fact that you, the fact that you you cut the vine this way, it's very it. You don't make enormous rendement, you know, and it's very the important. The yield is not no, great. The yield is not great, but it's important for the, the quality. quality. Yes. Is, yes, very good. Yes. So, well, you know, America loves Beaujolais. Yes. As Pierre led the Marquise out of the vineyards and back to her chateau, he felt like a prince. For Pierre, the grandson of a blacksmith from northern Burgundy, the aristocratic life of southern Burgundy certainly held an undeniably seductive appeal. The recipes from today's show and from the entire series are contained in the companion cookbook Pierre Frenet's Cooking in France. To order, call the toll-free number on your screen. The 336-page volume, complete with color photos, contains over 150 easy-to-follow recipes. The price is $30 plus shipping and handling. Please have your credit card ready when you call 1-800-358-3000. Pierre Frenet's Cooking in France was made possible by the Grand Marnier Foundation, proud to support public television. And by Carillon Importers Limited, importing beverages in the spirit of quality.